Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm going to be talking about DH underscore bus factor at this talk. And uh, I have even better slides than last time, as you can see. Uh, as a little digression, if you want to make slides like the other talk, which was all Zoomy, that's the program that you install, because a lot of people ask me about it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a little hoarse right now, too. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to make pretty slides, use that. And now on with the rest of the talk, I guess. Uh, so this is kind of about Deb Helper's maintenance model and how we can improve it. And, uh, you know, ever since I wrote it back whenever that was, I've pretty much been the sole committer. Uh, I'm sorry, then. I'm trying not to produce feedback or something. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. So ever since I wrote Deb Helper, I've pretty much been the sole committer. Um, I'm certainly not the sole code writer, but whenever there's a bug, I'm generally the one who ends up fixing it unless it's a nasty bug that I ignore for months and months and then somebody else fixes it. Um, <clears throat> but I, so that's one thing that I'd like to address. But another thing is that if you actually look at programs named dh underscore something that are in the Debian archive, and you could write some ugly Haskell code like this that, uh, you know, loads in the contents file, looks for things that look like deb helper that are in user bin that aren't dh make because it doesn't, it's not deb helper commands. And, uh, you know, you make it look pretty and you uh, ignore deb helper because it's not interesting for this data set or well, you partition things into Deb Helper or not, you get 58 commands in Deb Helper and 99 other commands. So Deb Helper is now distributed throughout the Debian archive in some way. And so I've kind of been thinking about that. I mean, is, are all these pieces that are out there part of Deb Helper or not? Is a question that I would like to get answered here and I don't know the answer to it. And uh, I thought we could kind of go over the list of some of the commands and just get some idea of, uh, first of all, could everybody who's in the audience who maintains or is in team maintenance of a dh underscore command, a deb helper command that isn't in deb helper, or one that is in deb helper and you're, you consider yourself mostly responsible for it, could you please raise your hand? So what, 10 people, something? So, yeah, um, there's a lot of these things. I don't know if anybody knows what they all do. Um, most of them should be written to a standard, uh, which is that it's a Perl script that uses this library in this way and looks like this and has documentation. Uh, a few of them, where's the Haskell ones? Ah, there they are are not, they're written in shell because Haskell would be too hard or something. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so we have a little bit of consistency maybe and they should all take the same options at least, which even the Haskell ones sort of do, though not entirely. And uh, there's a lot of them. And I kind of think that's okay, but I've also noticed that lately, especially in the past few years, I'll learn of some cool new dib helper command that does something that was added to some new package named dh-something. And I never seem to have even heard of the idea until it landed in the archive. And maybe that's okay too. You know, I'm not yelling at people for doing work. I'm just, it's interesting that people think that I'm just gonna say, no, sorry, this won't go in dib helper and we might as well just route around the block and put it in the archive. So uh, that's kind of where I'm coming at in this session, which isn't really intended to be a big talk. The idea was just to have some kind of a little boff thing and discuss this, especially among the people who raised their hand, but also, you know, just among everybody who uses Deb Helper and so on. So I've been struggling with the question of do we just let Deb Helper split up and do we say 
say everybody who maintains Deb Helper is part of the Deb Helper team, I'm sorry, maintains a Deb Helper command is suddenly part of the Deb Helper team and we add a mailing list and you know, we talk among ourselves and it doesn't matter which package it's in, you're still part of the team. Does that sound reasonable? Everybody who has an opinion, feel free to, does that sound reasonable? Raise your hand. Not many people think it's reasonable. Okay. And does, do people think that's an unreasonable thing to do? I'm sorry, the proposal is to basically say, everybody who maintains one of these programs is suddenly in the Deb Helper team, whether they want to be or not, and are subscribed to some mailing list. You're raising your hand that it's reasonable, Cole. Oh, question. Yeah, I think there's one. Is that on? Sorry, Joey. No, it's fine. I'll just bring it to you. Uh, um, hello? Ah, that's working now. Um, so I guess my, my question on that would be, would you, would you be comfortable uh, with any of the people who maintain random deb helper commands for, for something that's basically entirely domain specific, having commit access to deb helper? Because that's sort of the, the, other, the question the other way around. It is sort of the question the other way around. And I mean, in a way, things that are in Deb Helper are special in some way, or at least some of them are, because they're kind of the commonly accepted subset of stuff that we all use most of. And so I think it's possible that maybe the team, I mean, you know, if you have a real team, then the team should be able to come to a consensus this command belongs in Deb Helper now. And that's something else that I wanted to talk about is which of these commands belong in Deb Helper? You know, how many of these things, and I didn't get around to running the stats and getting a breakdown per command how many rules files use it. Um, but, you know, we could do that. And we could say, you know, DH auto reconf or something is used in 10% of all rules files and therefore should be in Deb Helper. And if there's going to be a Deb Helper team, then, you know, it seems to me that the team could make that decision. Um, so let me talk about something else that's kind of background to talking about this, which is that uh, there are commands in Deb Helper that I don't maintain. They're maintained by the people who contributed them or the people who are on a desktop team and have the icon spec in their head or, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, they're basically responsible for it. If I get a bug, I just forward it to them. And uh, so looking at it that way, it's really no problem to have DH auto reconf put in Deb Helper as long as they get the bug. Um, and I could continue to be the sole maintainer of Deb Helper and this could continue to work. I don't know if that even makes any sense at all, that I'm the only one with the commit bit to this. Um, so I should probably talk about my concerns with having the commit bit, but I think we have a question in the back. Is that Steve? Yeah. So I was just wondering if you have any thoughts about uh, what your position is on the question of pack, um, helpers being included in the dev helper package uh, versus helpers being included in the default sequence. Should there be a relationship there and should we should, should that be the threshold at which things get included in the Deb Helper package? Okay. Auto reconf is what? A great example, Colin ah. says. Is it in the default sequence? Ah, thank you, okay. Um, <laughs> yes, it should. Uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds to me that, okay, here's the problem with that, uh, anything in Deb Helper being in the default sequence idea. There's all kinds of garbage in Deb Helper. And uh, a lot of it is garbage that I wrote, and some of it is garbage that I shouldn't be calling garbage because someone else kindly contributed it to me, and it happened to not end up solving the right problem in the right way for the right amount of time, and is now deprecated. So you could say anything that's not deprecated in Deb Helper could be in the standard sequence. Maybe. There's a few things in Deb Helper now that aren't in the standard sequence and aren't deprecated for pretty good reasons. Um, so I don't know. 
Um, so what I, the other thing that I wanted to bring up is my general feelings about how hard Deb Helper is to maintain. And I think this is something we need to think about before we really think about having a team maintain it because if there's only one guy who can maintain it, Debian has a problem and that's the real purpose of this talk, right? And um, it's kind of my fault that Deb Helper has actually become harder to maintain as time has gone on. And it's also kind of not. Um, if Deb Helper were only used by 10% of Debian, it would be much easier to maintain. Um, um, if Deb Helper did not have this DH thing, it would be significantly easier to maintain. Really significantly. Probably 50% of my work now is someone wants to change something in DH and I have to figure out what this breaks and how to deal with the breakage. So um, even if there were a Deb Helper team, it would need to have experts on DH in it. And there are a few people who have done awesome work on DH, and so maybe we could rope them in and get them to handle bug reports on a daily basis since they know how to deal with it. They know how to think about, is this change which seems completely innocuous, and the bug reporter is like, it, there's no way this change could possibly break anything, or we're not even thinking about breakage because it's such a simple thing that it's, if it were any other piece of software that wasn't used by every single source package in Debian, making this change would be obviously correct. And uh, in a way, I'm responsible for this problem too, because Deb Helper's API is very broad, and people in Debian often think that Deb Helper's API is anything that Deb Helper does, whether it's documented or not, whether it's a bug or not, and they, they depend on this behavior, and of course they'll do it without even realizing that they're depending on it. So I uh, recently had a bug report here at DebConf, which I, uh, you know, I went and bisected the bug, and it turned out that I'd introduced it the very day that I rewrote Deb Helper in Perl uh, 15 years ago. I, I had a thinko, and I put in one word where I shouldn't have, and the bug lurked in the code all the way to the present when somebody ran over it, and I was like, well, this is a trivial bug to, oh, wait, you can fix this bug in ways that could break things that depend on this behavior, and this behavior isn't specified, and yeah. Um, I don't know if part of the problem is that now that I'm not as much of a Perl programmer anymore, I kind of care a little bit more about correctness. Maybe I've shot myself in the foot and I just need to be the Joey that I was five or 10 years ago. It was like, I'll just break everything, I don't care. <laughs> um, so, you know, maybe the DH bus factor's already happened and the guy who's standing in front of you can't maintain Deb Helper without going insane. So, I tend to think that I do have overblown fears about breaking stuff in Debian. I think that Debian should be good at handling random breakage. Yeah. Go ahead, Colin, if there is a mic. Test, test. So on the, on the old bug report in the past, you've, uh, uh, I mean, you, you've, uh, Correctly, I think, gone and said uh, we need to we need to make sure that uh, that all source packages in Debian work with this change. Um, fine. Uh, the in some cases this may require going off and fixing uh, packages in unstable uh, to cope with this. Um, in some cases, those may take a while to propagate to testing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what's your what's your threshold on? the point when you decide it's good enough. Because, you know, in some cases the things that break may not be in Debian, in some cases the thing, they may not be in testing, we may have to security update them, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and I don't know if you said in Debian specifically thinking maybe in Ubuntu too. I was, I was actually thinking more of, because uh, I think we, we can probably figure it out, but I was thinking more of uh, third party packages that okay. have, yeah. uh, that happen to depend on some random weirdness and are probably probably aren't maintained by people who uh, are plugged in enough to the 
to the rest of Debian to notice such changes. Right. So, yeah, I mean, if, it, if a change only breaks one package or three packages, and we catch that on the next full archive rebuild, and the breakage isn't package suddenly lost file that nobody will notice is gone, and, or, you know, something like that, then we're fine. And Ashish. No. Um, if that Let's isn't, try. oh, go ahead. Let me try that again, but I'll whisper to avoid feedback. Okay, great. Um, yeah, it sounds like you've said as a, um, you've said a few times with me as the only committer on Deb Helper with music. But, uh, so let's just change that question mark. It sounds like you don't want to, but it also sounds like you haven't given any reasons. Also, every time you take a drink from that, it looks like you're taking a swig of rye or something. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm conflicted. That's, that's why I'm having this talk, because on the one hand, I would love to have a Deb Helper team. And on the other hand, I, it, it's not that I'm questioning the competence of somebody on the team. It's just that I have a lot of experience with dealing with this, and they don't necessarily. The mic has vanished again. <laughs> yeah. I'll repeat it. <laughs> then maybe it makes a lot of sense to let people commit whatever makes sense to Git master or something and have you read the diff before making a release. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I don't, I'm suck at patch review. It's not a thing that I'm good at. So this is not a good solution. my patch review would basically consist of exactly what I'm complaining about now, which is needing to go figure out what it breaks. I already get patches. So getting patches isn't the problem. So maybe uh, what you need is a better testing framework to rebuild the entire archive with git dh. Maybe I do, but like I was saying, some of the failure modes might be hard to detect. It might just be missing a file, or it might put the wrong thing in the post-int script, or it, you know, it could be anything. So hypothetically, if we had binary reproducible builds, then you could verify that the contents were the same? Yes. Okay. Yes, please do that. <laughs> so where was I? Um, oh, if you have a question, if people have questions, keep asking them. Otherwise, I'll just ramble on because I'm really just trying to come, okay. to, a, come to some kind of a decision here and your input is what I want. So okay. when I'm just rambling, I'm just filling time. So uh, I was uh, thinking about the breaking the archive stuff and then trying to rebuild it to find what breaks. Uh, but what about silent failures? What if we don't notice? The package suddenly has a different entries and all we did is test whether it builds, but now it's broken. Um, I'm not that convinced that trying to have this broad interface uh, and tr just trying to break things and see whether it still works uh, is a good approach and maybe we step, need to step back a bit and need to make the interface more explicit and explicitly telling this is a Python package, this is a makefile package, this is an autoconf package and not having to figure this out automatically. Okay, uh, so you're thinking I'm talking about just the interface to DH where it goes off and magically figures out what to do. And yeah, that's a problem and we pr I pretty well understand how to avoid problems with that interface and a few other DH people do and we could easily teach that to a team and not have that pro not run into those problems. Um, the, the larger problem is outside of DH though. It's that you, any change to any Deb Helper command can, ha can ripple down and have unforeseen consequences in the archive because it can be, it can be depending on a bug or something. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, what I wanted to say is uh, not about the DH main part, about all the helpers, all the small, help, small helpers. Supposedly, they should have some very clear interface. They should be very clear what they do, which is many, many times not the case, especially with, for some uh, other language helpers and whatnot. And, but the thing is, they seem very suited for having unit tests and a clear definition of what they do. So once you have that, it will be pretty easy to check that they are, they are not breaking. 
So I think there's about three different answers to that. One of them is the whole Debian archive is a pretty good unit test if you can actually use it as one. I use it as one for pristine tar and it works great because I have a well-defined interface. I'm only doing one thing with the whole Debian archive. I'm trying to make pristine tar output it. Um, unit tests is something that would be wonderful and unfortunately I suck at writing test suites. This is why I don't write Perl anymore. Um, and if there were a dev helper team, maybe some of the dev helper team would feel motivated because they're in the team to actually write tests. I mean, it's not that there aren't any tests in dev helper, it's just that there aren't very many. Um, and I think there was a third answer to that. If I, have, have I answered you sufficiently or was there something else? Okay, proposed to have tests. We're, yeah. Proposing to have tests as a way of making sure that things don't break what other people is contributing. Yeah, but you know, again, I'm talking about the kind of breakage that, yeah, you can write a regression test for this kind of breakage just fine, but detecting the breakage in the first place is the problem. And you know, I don't know if there's anything about Depober's design that makes this a more likely, it more likely to have this problem than anything else. Um, I think that, for example, dpackage build package has exactly the same problem because I've struggled with oh, you want to add these build flag things, well, that's actually going to cause arbitrary random breakage to packages in the archive when they're configured. When you turn on dash JX, some make files will break. And people, you know, you have, it's a complicated system with a lot of moving parts, and you, ha you can have very well-documented simple commands with a simple interface and still have these problems. Colin. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, sucking at writing test suites, which I can, uh, which I can definitely relate to. Um, the as a as a really really low impedance uh, option, um, have you considered something like uh, the way Lintian's test suite works, uh, which is it's not actually this, but imagine that you took a copy of every source package that breaks and uh, shoved it into the dev helper tree, <laughs> and you know you could reduce it or something. But uh, uh, would that kind of thing be a decent place to start? And at least then you might have regression tests. It would be a good way to do a regression tests, definitely. And I think that if we had a test suite, not having to worry about how much the space it used would be a good thing. Um, and because we really are gonna want whole packages or whole packages minus the actual sourcey bits and, right. you know. Um, so yeah, I, I, I love the idea of having a test suite. I'm kind of curious if anybody in the audience would be interested in working on writing one, because I think we all have lives and stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, were you interested back there, Steve? No, I was just curious when I had the question. So I'm wondering. With respect, if, if the problem of interfaces changing and breaking things without realizing it is is a test suite the right way to go? Because in a sense, we're y you never test for the bug until you conceive of the bug, so you're always risking breaking things anyway. You, you, uh, the test suite is only going to cover you for regression testing anyway. Uh, uh, right. Well, you know. So I guess I'm wondering if just incrementing the deb helper compat level more frequently right. is actually the way to go. I think you could be onto something and I've really been doing it more often. Um, often if I get to a case where I'm like, okay, I, I need to fix this bug by making this change. Oh no, this change could possibly theoretically break something. I don't really feel like trying to get a full archive rebuild and check it, even though I may understand what the breakage might do or I might not. So I just throw it in and say, new dev helper compatibility level fixes this, and I'm doing that more and more. Um, the problem right, so with that is, and maybe it's a good thing, is that it distributes all the load out onto you. <laughs> I know well, that- Well, not all of it, because well, there's still the issue that the, you have a lot of dead code that you're carrying around in dev helper. There is the dead code issue, yes. But on the other hand, a test suite is not gonna be necessarily smaller than that. That is absolutely true. Um, However, how many people in this room have updated the Debian compatibility version from N to N plus one or more without reading the man page? That's all? Come on, people, be honest. <laughs> yes, man deb helper. Search for compat in uppercase. 
That's exactly what I'm saying. So, but then that takes an active effort on the part of the maintainer to have broken their package in, in light of your changes. So <laughs> they broke it, they keep both pieces. Yeah, it, it's definitely true. It's just that if you look at Debian as a whole, I'm still breaking Debian. The fact that somebody else has responsibility for it, Debian's still broken, right? So, so, so I have a, a, a horrible suggestion that everybody's going to hate. Um, every time you've got these, that's not a horrible suggestion. We hate. Um, every time you increase this compat level and you keep the old version, you have to have some kind of if stuff in your code, which no doubt is eventually going to become fragile and break. Have you considered um, just putting multiple versions of Del Pepper in the archive? So, uh, yeah, um, I haven't considered that. Um, I personally haven't found the maintenance burden of the old compact code to be that high so far. Um, very, I really don't refactor Deb Helper that much. If I did, it would suck because I'd have to test everything. But since I'm just putting an if in and the old branch is the old code and the new branch is new code that can be maintained, it's generally not been an issue and uh, I don't know if it would really save me anything to have version deb helpers in the archive. You could definitely do it that way. I just don't know that it's any better or any worse. Uh, so without going too far down this, it's impossible to fix deb helper rabbit hole. Um, you know, I, it's definitely possible to keep maintaining deb helper the way it's been maintained and it seems to work okay because I only have you know, three or four people a week sending me bug reports or saying, why didn't you fix this bug report that I sent you three weeks ago or three months ago or whatever, and I only get twice that many at DebConf, I think. Uh, twice that many per day at DebConf. <coughs> uh, so I'd kind of like to, you know, get back to the DebConf team idea a little bit because it kind of seems to me it's the only idea I have that would make maintenance of Deb Helper any better. I, I think I've said Deb Conf a few times when I meant Deb Helper. Um, yeah. Um, so I have a comment on your code review thing. Uh, personally, I love code reviews and I love reviewing code. Um, so maybe your expectation is just a little bit too high. Maybe you think that a patch should, after your review, be perfect and can't fail and you want to verify it all, whereas there already is great value in having a code review to catch you know, just minor issues or design issues and all that stuff. And also, um, before you answer, I think that um, the only way to move forward with team maintaining that helper is to actually allow for some breakage to happen and then count on the people who, you know, are responsible for, in quotes, for that breakage um, to learn from their mistakes and not make them again and in such a way spread the knowledge and, you know, also your methodology. That's, I think, yep. the important thing. So if I would send you a patch, what I would love to get is the feedback that you say, well, here's what I would do personally to ensure that this doesn't break, and then I could do it, right? Yeah, I mean, I hope that I generally do that, but sometimes maybe I just make all the changes and commit it with a commit message that doesn't explain anything. I don't know. It, I'm human too, I guess, right? Uh, I, how many people in the room get the sense that my fears are overblown, that you know, I should just go ahead and suck it up and do whatever. Okay, BDL does, other people do, people I trust do. So, okay, great. <laughs> so, um, I guess, you know, I would like to explore the, the team thing. And I don't see any reason not to just do it, really. And if people in the team want to continue running stuff by me until they feel comfortable, maybe that's just the way to do it and just let them figure it out, you know. Um, and it's really not like you have to have 10 or more years of hard won experience on Deb Helper to maintain, maintain Deb Helper because I clearly maintained it for 10 years before that was the case. And Steve. So uh, an interesting example that comes to mind in this discussion is the case where uh, I proposed some particular variables be exposed in places as substitution variables uh, to allow uh, multi-arch paths to be to be expanded in a, in a useful way and um, you rejected that and um, I think I think at the time you you made a uh, sort of a, a very brief comment of the bug 
went off and implemented your own thing, and uh, it came back as a fait accompli. Um, that, of course, well, that was the, the DH exec, that, that led to DH exec. It, it, it basically said you could have anything, um, any, any dev helper uh, file could be an executable that does its own thing and spits out the result, which is uh, a, a clever which is insight, uh, and it's, it's very general. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, that those kinds of insights um, are somewhat unique to you. Oh, well, okay, I was, gonna, I was taking this comment a completely different way, so I think I'll just take it that way and then I'll answer what you're actually saying. <laughs> so, first of all, I apologize from the depths of my heart for being an asshole about you, Ubuntu, and Deb Helper, and other things. Um, secondly, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that was an interesting general solution that was arrived at in a fit of peak, and I don't think that I'm unique in that regard. Uh, I think that anybody can say, well, we'll just generalize the hell out of this or whatever, you know. Uh, you know, and I'm not saying, and if there's a dev helper team, I'm certainly gonna be part of it going forward. I have no interest in not being part of dev helper maintenance at all. I would just like to not have as many bug reports that I have to personally deal with and or that stay open for too long or you know, or th and this splintering problem, which I don't know if it's really a problem that we have all these different dev helper commands out there, but it seems to me that it can't be ideal unless we just want to fully distribute dev helper maintenance throughout Debian, and maybe we should be thinking about removing commands from dev helper and giving them to other people or something. Um, so let me talk a little bit more about, I mean, the fact that there are people who are responsible for little pieces of dev helper already, you know, <laughs> I could easily give up more little pieces. That would not be a problem. Um, so what I've been really thinking about with this team is if there is a dev helper team and what is the team maintenance model? I don't like the team maintenance model where everybody in the team is equally responsible for everything, which means that no one is responsible for anything. You know, I think that if we have a dev helper command, it should say at the bottom who is responsible of the man page, who is responsible for this command. And that way when it breaks, you know who to talk to, or something like that. We kind of need a team maintenance model for each dev helper command or something. And we've kind of split it up in that way already, except for the, you know, the third of it that's actually in dev helper. So I've kind of been mulling this kind of thing over, and I don't know, maybe it's the kind of thing that we need to form a team and, and think about it and, you know, come up with something that makes sense. Um, I think I've kind of run almost dry on as far as what I wanted to talk about because people seem receptive enough to being on a team. Could, did I ask for a show of hands for who would actually be interested in being on a dev helper team? Okay, let's see them. There's five or six, maybe. We have a third of Debian here, so there might be 15. Okay, or 20, I forgot to raise my hand. I don't know. Um, that sounds like a reasonable team to get started, I guess. I kind of like the idea of just drafting everybody who has a dev helper and command into the mailing list at least, because why not? We should, if we have a mailing list, you know, we should communicate on it. That's what it's for. Uh, okay. I don't know really how I'm doing on time. Do I have 10 minutes left or something? Ah, so it actually worked out. I actually ran dry at the right time. That's nice. Um, yeah. I think I'm done unless somebody has comments. So I guess we'll just go to comments now. Yes, I wanted to make a couple of comments. One, I think, on what you were saying about the splitting, is that, in my opinion, it will make sense to, to have more dev helper packages and concentrate more on, on the core and maybe enforce more some uh, um, adherence to the DH standards. Yeah. And the other thing is what you said about team maintenance. You were say, saying that you don't like a team with nobody, or everybody's responsible, whatever. And I think you might try some, a uh, team can work pretty well doing that if uh, the team is functional. I've been on functional teams that have still had the problem that a bug came in and everybody was busy so the bug didn't get dealt with because they all thought that the other guy wasn't busy. That's, unless your team is all hanging out on IRC every day, I don't see how you can avoid that, do you? Yeah, but I don't have the bandwidth to hang on an IRC, another IRC channel all day and actually know who's active and who's doing what. It's, you know, I need to 
have a mailing list with, synch with synchronous communication, please. Asynchronous communication, please. Steve. I thought you had a mic. I, I have a mic. I've been holding the mic for a bit. I don't know if my comment was so oh, well. So actually, you were looking at me with the mic in a way that indicated you wanted to talk. Okay, never oh, mind. Oh, sorry. Well, I, I, I do actually, but I think the topic... I think Geert is the one with the mic. I raised my hand before, but I'm not interested in maintaining all of the developer, but I am one of the maintainer of, uh, of one of the DH comments, and I definitely would be okay for me to maintain it within uh, a greater developer team, because uh, there's also the bus factor on those tools. <laughs> Uh, I'm maintaining one myself. Uh, there are no co-maintainers or anything, so yeah, and, and you kind of great for those if they could be integrated back. And you have a subset of the same problem that I have, really. I don't know which thing you're maintaining. Maybe it's only used by a few packages. It's not the. It's a uh, link tree, DH link tree. It's ah, yeah. So I, I think yeah, I submitted it to you, and you suggested. Yeah, and I you said something like, "I can't maintain this," or. It doesn't yeah. seem like a but good I, idea. I would have no problem maintaining it with yeah. the developer issue. Right. Uh, so the only comment is, well, uh, this uh, tool is rather stable and doesn't change much. I'm not sure I would be interested to get all the traffic, uh, of bug traffic, just to watch it. So if there are some coordinator, we could ping or uh, assign this. Yeah, I mean, if you do have that kind of responsibility, that kind of thing could develop, I guess. You know, and there could be some way of routing the bug to the person who's probably responsible, and if they don't get around to it, mm -hmm. routing it to the team or whatever. Uh, yeah. <coughs> but that's only potential problem. Otherwise, I think it's a great way to, it should rather be open and get new kind sooner because, well, that's a kind of, uh, that's a way to find new volunteers, really. Yeah. <laughs> they started uh, with one command and tend to discover other bugs and fix them and gain knowledge. Yeah, can I pull the audience on another question, which is just as general Debian package maintainers who I assume probably use Deb Helper. How many of you use Deb Helper things that aren't in Deb Helper or think you might? Okay, like half the audience or more. How many of you find that to be annoying in some way or another? So, Joey, I was actually going to comment that I wanted to really thank you for this talk, if for no other reason than I had no idea that this many of the DH underscore commands were not things that you were personally sort of keeping an eye on. And that's simultaneously wonderful and amazingly scary. Um, <clears throat> it, it's interesting because I've certainly been using um, Dev Helper stuff for a long time, and I've actually been a very happy consumer of DH now for a while. Um, and as I look down this list, there are a number of those that I'm using at one time or lots of times. And it's been very interesting because, in general, um, they do mostly just seem to do the right things. And I am one of those people who actually test things a lot before I actually upload them, except in really strange and rare cases. Um, so there have been a couple times when I've stumbled over something that surprised me that caused me to trigger a conversation with you or somebody else. But in general, I have this gut sense that this ecosystem is working amazingly well, particularly now that I understand how distributed some of this is. So that's why I raised my hand a little while ago when you asked, you know, are you worrying about this too much? Because, you know, my sense is this is working pretty well. And... You can certainly do things to make it better or make it less stressful for yourself in the future, but I, it's not like I feel like there's some big net present danger that you know we have to be tackling. Um, I, I feel, I mean, I agree with you in a way. It's just that I feel that maybe I'm not as active on Deb Helper as I have been at some points in the past or something like that. And, you know, it might just be an ebb or whatever. I, I had a big ebb and then I did DH and so, you know, who knows? Uh, but yeah, thank you for that. Geert? What about a pointing out a new generation of uh, DH? Make, uh, write down some guidelines from, okay, this should be the, the next kind of Debian helper. I, I, I wasn't there uh, when the switch from deselect to opt was there, but there was a moment okay, the old system doesn't work, we need a new generation. Well, Would you be gu guiding that? Could you point out a roadmap uh, for that? <laughs> so, I mean, 
as far as I've been able to come up with, DH was the new generation of Dev Helper, and it just built on the old generation of Dev Helper. And I don't have some master idea that would make Dev Helper's architecture better, because if I did, I would probably just do it. So, you know, I can't really help with that. If somebody is trying to write the next Deb Helper and wants to replace it, and let's say it's maybe not CDBS, or hey, maybe it is CDBS, I have some suggestions for you. <laughs> if it's CDBS, I have a few more than I would have had for somebody else. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Thank you. Are there any more questions before we're done? Questions, comments, whatever, we're done then. It looks like. Okay, well, thanks for a good discussion and thank you for helping me maybe make up my mind on this thing that I've been mulling over for a couple of years, I think, on and off. And, oh, Ashish, go ahead. What's the plan? What's the plan? Uh, sleep on it and find somebody who can make a mailing list, I guess. I guess that's actually easy, isn't it? Okay, so thanks again, folks.